Before we get started today, I just wanted to give a shout out to Emmanuel Lopez. Uh, he's got a new YouTube channel. He's just starting out. I'm going to put a link uh, to his channel down in the description uh, because if you like what I'm doing here, you'll probably like what he's up to. He is building an auto top-off system out of a Raspberry Pi, and it looks pretty good. So um, go check out his link, go give him some support, and uh, all right, let's get on with our video. Now that we've got our Pi set up, uh, we can start doing something with it. So today we're going to be looking at these GPIO pins. These 40 pins on the Raspberry Pi 3 are really one of the more powerful things um, about this device, I think. These are going to allow us to interact uh, in many different ways with you know, the external environment. Some of these pins uh, are for supplying power. Some of them are 3.3 volts, others are 5 volts. There's some ground pins in here um, and a few special pins, but the majority of them uh, are going to be used or can be used by us um, to accomplish tasks. And you could think of a lot of these as sort of just like switches. We could turn them on or we could turn them off, or they can be configured as inputs where we can collect data from the external environment. So I just have a handful of uh, things here. You know, just for instance, um, you could do simple things like uh, hooking up LEDs or buttons, you know, powering them with it. I'll be working on a pH probe. So that's something that's in the works right now which will be also controlled you know, with the GPIO. Uh, temperature sensors, uh, on other types of sensors. This is another um, ambient temperature sensor along with humidity. Uh, very important, we'll be doing you know, relays, whether single channel um, or single channels, you know, multi multiple channels, uh, all sorts of things. LED, you know, ultrasonic sensors, they, I mean, you could use your imagination. There are so many different ways that we can interact with this device. And, you know, I think we can really, uh, you know, imagine some pretty inventive ways how we'll be able to apply this to our aquarium in the future. But before we get started with any of that, uh, we need to learn a little bit more about, you know, how these pins here function. And, you know, just a minute, I'm going to put a graphic up on the screen and, you know, show you how these are laid out and what the function of each of these is. So if you go online and search for Raspberry Pi GPIO layout or pinout, you'll probably find something like this. Um, this one is at pinout.xyz, uh, but you will find you know, multiple different uh, graphics that you might be able to print out. Uh, this one here is a nice one. It's interactive. And you know, this will tell you what each one of those 40 pins does. And so as you look at this, you know, it looks like there's a lot here, um, but the important things to take away from this right now are the numbering scheme, or is the numbering scheme. So if we look up here in the top left, that is pin number one, and it's pretty straightforward. It goes, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way down to 39 and 40. So there are two main, or there, there are two ways that are used when we're programming in Python to identify these pins. So the first way is the board layout, which is these physical pin locations of the pins. So each pin would be referred to by its physical uh, location, you know, whether it be, you know, 19, 34, you know, 35, whatever. Um, or there is the other designation, which is uh, basically the Broadcom pin layout or BCM. And that are, is these uh, values out here. And... These numbers don't really make a whole lot of sense. You need to have a, a printout something like this uh, to decode them. But as you can see, this is BCM 2, 3, 4. And then you got 14, 15, 18, 23, 24. And you got 8 down here. There are no real order. But this is another method of identifying each one of these pins. So when we are working in Python, we need to pick... Uh, one of these methods and stick with it throughout the application or throughout the program. Uh, you really can't mix it up. So we, you need to decide, are you going to be using the board layout or the BCM layout? And when you're getting started out, it's probably easier to just use the board layout because you can count the pins um, pretty easily. Uh, but as I have found out in most of the uh, examples and stuff that you find online, um, it seems like most people seem to use this BCM layout. 
Um, I don't know why, but it just seems to me that's how they do it. So I'll probably be using that in my example as well. I've kind of gotten into that habit as well. But um, yeah, and then as you know, in this one here, if you click on each one of these, you'll, you've got some more information over here about you know what these pins can be used for and some information about them. Uh, so this is a pretty handy tool right here. So um, yeah, so now we know a little bit about the numbering scheme here. Uh, let's get into some Python and uh, make these pins do something for us. For this project, we're going to do something uh, pretty basic, but it's going to illustrate some of the very important concepts with working with the GPIO. Um, so first of all, I've got my Raspberry Pi here, and I have a breadboard hooked up uh, through this breakout cable with the breakout cable um, to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm now able to access uh, those pins over here. It makes it a lot more convenient uh, for working on some projects and doing some prototyping. So we're going to set up um, a little project to blink some LEDs on and off. So we'll just start with a single LED. I'll show you how to wire that up. Um, so this is just a green LED. Uh, but if it would focus... LEDs have two pins on them. There's a longer one and a shorter one. Uh, the longer one is the positive lead, so it's, it's important to remember uh, which one that is because if you hook these up backwards, they won't work. Uh, so the long one is going to be the one closer to the board for me. Let's get that plugged in. Uh, and also, with when working with the LEDs, um, you need to have a resistor. Otherwise, uh, they also won't work. So this is just a 220 ohm resistor, which will work fine for this. And these need the resistor needs to be in series uh, with the power to this thing. So what I'm going to do is pick out a ground pin on this board here, which is right there. If you can see that. So I'm plugging the uh, resistor from a ground pin to the negative rail on the breadboard, which is this blue uh, line down there. So it's just going from ground, if I've got that correct, yes I do to the negative um, and then we need to just complete the connections uh, so this pin down here actually I'm going to move this up to there get to, give me some more room so this pin here it was the negative so I'm going to go ahead and just plug it over here so now the negative pin which is the short lead is now connected um, on this rail which is in series with this 220 ohm resistor which goes to the ground pin on our GPIO and then we just need to simply take the positive pin of the LED and pick one of these GPIO pins um, to work with it. So we're going to pick um, a physical pin 40, which is also GPIO 21 in the BCM terminology. So I'm just going to plug that down to the last pin there. So this red wire is going to be drawing power 3.3 volts uh, off of this pin 21 into the positive lead of the LED, and then the negative lead of the LED goes to the negative rail up here through the resistor back in there and just completing the circuit. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple. And uh, yeah, let's get over to the software and learn how to turn this LED on and off. We'll make a... So now we have our circuit hooked up. Uh, we're going to log into the Raspberry Pi and write a small program to work with those LEDs. So I'm just going to use VNC like we discussed in the last video to log into my Raspberry Pi. So I'm now here. And the tool that I like to use, um, I'm sure there's others out there, but we're going to be using something called Idle. So we're just going to go up to our menu, down to programming, and we're going to go to Python 3 Idle and open that up. And now we uh, are present it with a Python shell. Um, but what we're going to do is just go to File, New File. We're going to create a new Python Python script and you know, write our program here. So we can use this window over here to write our program. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to want to do um, is import the Raspberry Pi GPIO library uh, into our project. So I'm going to type import our gpio. G. And the great thing about Raspberry Pi is that it comes with this library already built in. Um, so there's a great 
Python tool set already built into the Raspberry Pi that allows us to interact uh, with these GPIO pins. Um, and there's one other library I'm going to want to import, and it says time. Um, and you'll see why I'm going to be using that later. So we're going to be just importing um, those two libraries there. So let's write a little comment. So next thing we're going to do is define the LED pins. Uh, so, so far we just have uh, one LED. So I'm going to just write a variable, LED pin green equals, and then we plug that into pin number 21. So I'm going to put 21 there. So that was the, actually first we'll start with the board pins just to make it simpler. So that was in pin 40. So as we discussed earlier, there's two numbering schemes for the uh, pins on the board. Uh, so that's the LED was plugged into pin 40 on this one. So next statement we need to do is something called set mode, because we we're just talking about those pin, um, the pin numbering. So we need to set, or we need to tell the application which type of um, numbering scheme we're going to use. So we're going to use the board numbering scheme. So I'm, just, I'm telling it that to do that. And then next thing we need to do is tell um, the Raspberry Pi, are we going to be using that pin as an input or an output? So in our case, we're going to be using it as an output. We're going to be telling that LED what to do. So I'm going to use gpio.setup and then we're just going to go to LED in green, that's our variable, which equals 40. And then we're going to tell it gpio.out. So we're now telling it that it's an output. And then from there, um, the next thing we're going to do is just enter into a loop. And within this loop, we are just going to uh, basically blink the green LED. And why is it indenting so far? It should only go four. There we go. Yeah, and it's um, common practice within Python. Uh, indentation is very important, and you typically use four spaces per indentation level. Um, so. Now all we need to do is tell it GPIO dot output LED pin green comma. So we're basically saying true. So we're going to set it to a high bit. So basically turn that pin on, which is going to send 3.3 .3 volts uh, through our LED. Is it doing that? Anyway. Um, and then we could just do like some output. So I will just, so that will display on the screen that our green LED is on. And then uh, let's put a little sleep. So this is where the time function comes in. And we'll have it pause uh, half a second. And then after that, we are going to uh, basically tell it to turn the LED off. Uh, oh, sorry. What am I doing? Just set that to false. Okay. And then we'll have it say just pause another half a second. And that should be all we need to do. So basically what we did was we imported some libraries um, into our program. Uh, we defined which pin number we're going to be using. Uh, we told it that we're going to be using the board pin number uh, scheme. And then we basically are telling Problem right there. Basically, just telling um, that we are going to be using that uh, P 
pin 40 as an output. And then we enter into a loop here that is basically just going to uh, turn the LED on. It's going to print that the LED is on. And then it's going to turn it off. And we will print that it is off. And then we will pause another half of a second. And then it'll just come through here again. Just keep looping, turning the LED on. A half a second, turn it off, and then continue on. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this. And I will save this in our documents. And let's just call this link underscore tutorial dot py. It's important that uh, use extension py for your Python scripts. And we're just going to save that. So now if I hit run, if I didn't make any problems, uh, this should start running. And here you have it, LED on, off, on, off. Um, I'm going to have to set up the camera and capture that so you can see it. Uh, but you'll get the idea. It's, um, it's working. And we can go ahead and expand this a little bit more and add a few more LEDs and uh, show a few more concepts on here. In the interest of time, I've gone ahead and added two more LEDs to the breadboard off camera. I've added a yellow LED and a red LED, and they are connected in much the same way as the green LED, uh, except the positive pin of the yellow LED is going to pin number 38 uh, on the GPIO, and the red LED positive lead is going to pin 37. Um, so I've gone ahead and added, you know, those two variables here. Um, we had to go through and set up uh, the yellow and the red pin, just like we did the green one, and let it let the program know that they will be used as outputs. Um, and then I changed my uh, while loop a little bit. I've added, you know, support for the yellow and the red LED, uh, so they will blink on and off, uh, just like the green one, and you know, change that slightly. Um, and I could go ahead and run this now. And I, there was a few other um, elements that I wanted to discuss. Just a few things about housekeeping and uh, how to some best practices, you know, for when you're writing these uh, applications. So if I go ahead and write this, um, it is now cycling through the LEDs. Uh, you know, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red um, are turning on. And if I were to or if I wanted to stop this program, um, on the keyboard I would hit Control C, and it basically sends an interrupt to the application, tells it, "Hey, stop!" It basically sends an error to the application, um, or you know, an interrupt, and it basically will stop running right there. So what had happened right now is uh, the yellow LED was on. And I could you know, put my camera there, and I'll show you that the LED is still running. My application is no longer running, but the yellow LED is still on. Um, and I think it's pretty important when we're going to be working with our aquarium controller, we always want to be in control of these pins. I don't think we ever want to be in a state where we exit our application, and those pins are doing you know, whatever. Uh, imagine if this was a pin controlling a relay for a heater, or for an alkalinity doser, um, if your application was not running, you would not want that pin uh, to still be on, probably. So we could do some um, additional things with our application to ensure that you know those things don't happen. Um, and there's one other uh, thing that I would like to illustrate. So I went ahead and stopped my application. If I go and run it again right now, and I'm going to stop it again. You'll see I got a lot of error messages or a few warnings, basically, uh, when I went ahead and started the application again. And basically what it was telling me, the Raspberry Pi was saying, hey, you know, these pins were already in use. So when we exited the application the last time, we never told the Raspberry Pi that we were finished with those pins. So when we started up this application again, uh, the Raspberry Pi is throwing a warning to us saying, hey, you know, somebody else was working on this. And they never told us that they were done. So that's another thing that we want to add to our application. 
so that when we do exit cleanly on our application, uh, we tell the Raspberry Pi, hey, we're finished with these pins. Uh, somebody else can go ahead and use them and you know, we're not going to interfere. So the first thing we want to do is catch the uh, keyboard interrupt. So if we, um, if somebody tries to stop the application by hitting control C, uh, we can handle that and do something uh, when that happens. So what I want to do is basically put some error handling into our application. So we're going to do a try and indent this. So it's going to try to do the loop, but if it senses an exception, then we want it to tell it to do a few things. So instead of leaving the LEDs on, we're going to go ahead and turn everything off. So. And we just need to do that same thing for the yellow and the red. And then we will go ahead and notify the user that we are now exiting cleanly. Okay, and then something else we will do is we'll put a, a finally, and this is just a little uh, extension here, but what we always want to do when we are done working on our application, it's always good practice to clean up the GPIO, basically telling the system that we are now done with it, and it's free to be used by uh, anything else. And we'll put a little message here notifying the user that we are now finished. Now if I save this and go ahead and run, we should get um, those warnings when it first pops up uh, telling us that uh, you know, it was not exited cleanly the last time, so let's see if that happens. But then when we exit from now on, uh, this should now work properly. So again, the LEDs are blinking, and if I decide to control C to get out of there, uh, we still have a problem here. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. What did I mess up? Oh, missed the capitalization there. Enter to R. There we go. Let's fix that. All right, LEDs are blinking. Let's hit Control C, and this time it exited cleanly. So it was able to detect that I hit Control C, um, which you know it was doing its loop over here. So going through this loop. Uh, it knows I hit a keyboard interrupt to turn everything off, so it went ahead and turned off all the LEDs, and they're all off right now. Um, and then after it goes through, you know, this part of the exception, it'll hit the finally, uh, where it's doing the GPIO cleanup and basically telling us that we're done. And if I were to start this program again, you'll see that there are no warnings because we exited the program gracefully. Um, we did everything that we were supposed to do, did some housekeeping, and you know the system is no longer upset at us, you know, for exiting the program and trying to start it back up again. So, just some uh, good practice to do um, when you are operating uh, or you know 
when you are writing your Python scripts, um, interacting with the GPIO. All right, I know that was a long video, uh, but I think we covered a lot of important topics there and got through you know, a lot of the basics that we need to know uh, in order to progress with this project. So hopefully you were following along and you know, made it this far. And uh, you know, if you did, you know, here's our reward. <laughs> we finally get to see the reef tank um, here. So, uh, but seriously, I think uh, from the next videos coming up, um, they'll probably focus more on some of the more practical applications, maybe uh, hooking up the temperature sensor, uh, controlling the relays, um, you know, maybe the pH probe once I get that finalized. Um, and yeah, take it from there. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys are finding this informative, if you think it's you know, too basic or going too, you know, taking too long. Um, you know, we could speed it up a bit or you know, if you need to know more information, I could you know, slow it down a bit. Uh, I'm not quite sure you know, what you know, skill set people have and you know, what they already know or don't know. But uh, I don't know. I'm just trying to cover all bases here. But um, anyway, uh, if you guys you know like this video and find it informative, hit that thumbs up, leave some comments below, and hit that subscribe button because uh, you know we still got a long ways to go before we've got a aquarium controller that you know we could actually use. Um, so uh, yeah. So again, just thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.